Hello, this is Kay McDonald with The Power of Charms, and I have Janine Konopalski with me today from Canine Companions. Janine and I have been working together for, gosh, over 10 years, and um, this is the first time that we've actually gotten to meet face-to-face, -face, so we're really excited. Janine, you've been with Canine Companions since 2006, correct? I have, yes. Thank you, Kay, and appreciate you so much for inviting me here today. Um, we you know, over the past 17 years, Canine Companions brand has really evolved and we've been able to serve a lot more people. And I think, you know, having this conversation today is going to be super fun and, and helpful for people to learn more about us. Yeah, well, you are the leading organization for service dogs that help people with disabilities become independent, correct? Leading in the nation? Yeah, absolutely. And we, we actually founded the concept of service dogs way back in 1975. So um, guide dogs were around after uh, with the world wars, um, you know, there were a lot of uh, vision loss for our military. And um, right here where I am in Northern California, um, our founder was on a trip and saw donkeys and mules doing tasks and retrieving items and thought, wow, you know, I can train dogs to help people with disabilities. So she created the concept of service dogs and Canine Companions was born. Um, we're gonna be 50 years old coming up here in, in a few years and um, we're, we continue to grow and, you know, we're excited to be able to serve more people. Well, you have a nationwide reach, don't you? We do. We have, um, though we're, we're headquartered in Northern California, we have training centers in six different locations. Um, we're, we have two in California, one in uh, Dallas, Texas, we're in Ohio, we're on Long Island in New York, and then in Orlando, Florida. Um, we have uh, service dog users, uh, you know, people that have been partnered up with the dog in all 50 states. And uh, most of this is that we can do this because of our wonderful volunteers. We have almost 5,000 volunteers across the country. Um, we have 54 chapters. So these are our volunteers that have formed groups so that they can do outreach events and really spread the word and, um, you know, create more exposure for, for K9 Companions and the great work that our service dogs do. Uh, well, uh, volunteers are such an important component to many organizations. I did not know you had 5,000, though. That's, that's amazing. And I know you do events around the country as well. We're, we're based in Phoenix, and you have a, a walk and an event here in Phoenix. And uh, yeah. so I've gotten some, some firsthand you know, touch with, with you guys. Um, yeah. yeah, but um, tell us, tell us like what's in the cards, what's in the future? Do you have any new programs you're going to be implementing or any? Support? Well, I, I mean, I, you know, I think for volunteering, uh, one of the most um, fun ways is to puppy raise. Um, oh. So we have volunteers that will, um, will first of all, either care for our dogs while they're having the puppies. That's usually a pretty big commitment uh, because the puppies are actually born in their homes. Um, and then we have a group of volunteers that raise our puppies, which is the most fun. And um, they're taking a eight week old dog and bringing them into their home and their family and their community and teaching them commands, attending puppy classes, uh, socializing the dog out in different, different um, areas of the community. And then um, that, you know, is just a really great and really immersive way to get involved to understand the great work that a service dog can do. Um, and then volunteering at events, we have, um, I think what you're referring to there, Kay and Phoenix, we have Dog Fest, which is a family friendly pet type event that happens out in the community at various parks and other locations where there's activities for the dogs and activities for the people. And so volunteers play, play a huge role in organizing those and, um, you know, working those booths and helping with logistics. And we have a lot of other events, too, that we put on throughout the year, golf events, um, opportunities to get to know um, the organization. And then we have our big gala events that happen as well. Well, and who doesn't want to be around a puppy or a dog, right? I mean, what a great job you have. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, I think the best part of working in marketing for Canine Companions is 
getting to uh, flip through all those puppy pictures that that our folks um, send us and, and utilize them. Um, and, and I think, you know, the, the, the one thing about Canine Companions, when I, when I began at the organization, I, I'm a dog lover. I had, you know, dogs in my life. And, um, but what you really learn is the connection um, that they provide to the people. So um, we often say that you come to Canine Companions for the dogs, but you stay for the people. And being able to see just how a dog can change somebody's life and really open up opportunities and possibilities for them is, is so amazing. It's a great, great place to work. Yeah. Life, life changing for the people that um, get a companion. Tell us a little bit more about the dogs. Do, are they all one breed? Do you raise them there from puppies to service dogs? Tell us about that program. Sure. Yeah. We, um, at our headquarters, we have a team of um, researchers and veterinarians and folks that are really working to make sure that our dogs are the best of the best. You know, when we partner a dog with a person, we want that to be a long partnership. And so we want the healthiest dogs we can possibly get. And through um, different studies, through canine cognition, behavior studies, um, a lot of really interesting ways that we, we look at dogs and we found that breeding them and having um, that as the best way to ensure that we have enough dogs to serve the people that we need. We've tried to rescue dogs, we've gone to shelters, and while that's been um, fairly successful, it does take a lot of time and effort. Um, we've also tried a variety of different breeds. Uh, we've trained poodles and corgis, and we've trained German shepherds. Um, but it's really the Labrador and the Golden Retriever that um, seem to have the best characteristics as a service dog. Um, we also do a cross of those two, and those are probably the most um, effective. So it's a Labrador Golden Retriever cross that have been hugely successful. Um, they really, you know, they're great dogs, as we all know. They're always one of the top breeds for pet dogs. Um, they uh, love companionship and people. They like to please. They're great at retrieving, yes. which is a key skill. Um, so um, we have really found that, that, that those breeds are um, the most effective and really allow us to, um, you know, provide more dogs to people by increasing the numbers that we can get out there in our communities. Yeah. Well, they're smart and intuitive dogs, too, and they sure sure are adorable so I'm sure everybody falls in love with them too <laughs> uh, in addition to the to the service aspect um, so we have done a couple projects together and you are the branding marketing st strategist really for the organization and um, I thought it might be kind of fun to share some of the products and opportunities yeah. that we've done together and I'd love for you to tell people how you've used them to engage Absolutely. your community. I have some here and you know I um I've saved them because I love them so much. And I think this was our first one. And um, oops, hopefully you can see that with my background. Um, yes. But this is the Getting Band. Yes. And it has a charm um, with our logo. And we um, we have we we love these. It also um, behind it, you know, has another little thank you charm. And we utilize this to thank our donors. And it was a hugely successful. Um, um, campaign for us. And then what we did next was uh, we we had a fundraising campaign that we called Give a Dog a Job. And, you know, these dogs want to work, but we really, we the way that Canaan Companions is funded is really through individuals, um, you know, some corporations and private foundations. And so in order for us to train more dogs, those donations are super important to us. So we did a fundraising campaign um, called Give a Dog a Job. And, and for this, we created a, a small little clip-on charm that is the dog. And our dogs all wear vests with the logo when they're out and about in the communities. You may have seen them. Our future service dogs wear the yellow capes. And then our full trained service dogs that are partnered with the person with the disability have the blue capes. So this is a super fun little charm. It also has our logo um, on the back. And so you could utilize this one in a variety of different ways. And um, in addition to connecting this to our campaign, we sold them in our gift shops. Uh -huh. And as well as the very fun bracelet that I have on that has the same dog. I mean, I think the beads on this were 
are the colors of canine companions are yellow and blue. Yeah, so we just, too. yeah, we just love the bracelet. Um, super, super fun. And, um, and then most recently, um, well, actually about three years ago now, we, we did a rebrand. We, we looked at our brand strategy um, and our logo and, and saw that we, could, we had the opportunity to really do something great. great. And um, we have a new version of the logo that we did with you, which is the key fob. I took it out of the little packet, um, but you, you know, Charity Charms allows you to customize the card. Um, so we attach that with, you know, how, you, you know, thanking them to support our mission and our social media handles. And then we provide this, it has our new logo mark on it. And then on the back is our full logo. And this is actually a part of a campaign that we're doing for monthly donors. So people, you know, that dedicate um, to give every month to a nonprofit are so valued. Um, that is really ongoing funding that a nonprofit can utilize. And so we thank our those monthly donors by sending them the key font and they just love it. Mm -hmm. And um, we're able to also, you know, continue with the bright blue and yellow. We have the the blue key fob, which is great. Right, right. Well, we sure we sure appreciate it. We love we love working with your organization, and uh, your mission is is just amazing. And the impact that you have just across the United States is just profound. So thank you for utilizing these products and telling us about them. Tell me a little bit more about your rebrand. That's a big deal. And um, over the years, the charities that I've worked with. You know that a lot of them do that, and there's a need. But tell me why you did it, and and how you decided on your new logo. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, we like I said, we're going to be coming up on 50 years. So when you have that brand that has really had, you know, has a lot of, um, own, you know, stake in the in the community and even ownership with your volunteers and the people that um, are working with you, uh, you, you need to be very thoughtful in that. So we didn't want to just update our logo. We really wanted to relook at our strategy. And again, this is the old logo. Um, it utilizes a, a image of a person that utilizes a wheelchair with the dog. And Canine Companions reach has really expanded. We're serving so many more people than we did in 1975. And they don't all utilize a wheelchair. Mm. So we wanted to be more inclusive to them. And particularly, as I mentioned, the dog's vest has our logo on there. And so, you know, we have people out there in the community um, walking around with their logo, which is wonderful advertising opportunity. Yes. Um, but we wanted to ensure that they felt comfortable with, with that. And we, we re-looked at our strategy. Um, we wanted to not only update the logo, but we wanted to ensure that the way that we were talking about ourselves and presenting ourselves to the public um, really allows us to serve more people. So we've, um, done certain little tweaks with our messaging and and our strategy to to really lead within the service dog industry um we're by you know not only the first but by far the largest we've placed over 7500 service dogs since our founding and um we knew that in order to grow and really represent ourselves effectively through our brand we needed to make that change and you know the need for service dogs is so great um, there are over 60 million adults in America that have a disability. It's, you know, that's one in four Americans. And just five years ago, it was one in five, and it, it keeps increasing. Um, over 8% of our um, children have disabilities now. And there's just so much more that we could do to um, provide a service dog that can do certain tasks to allow them to live independently, um, allows, you know, um, a dog can pull a wheelchair to help save their energy. Um, they alert the deaf and hard of hearing to sounds so you don't miss the doorbell ringing or the microwave timer going off. And then even with our veterans, uh, we do serve military veterans, um, both those that may have uh, a physical disability that had resulted from, from combat, but also PTSD, which is really a growing area um, for our veterans and first responders. And those dogs are learning commands to help relieve anxiety, allowing them to be out in the public and um, you know, helping with possible nightmare interruptions that might be happening. And so with all of these 
sort of, you know, updated ways that we could utilize service dogs to help people, we wanted to update our brand as well. And we kept the core of our brand. We're still yellow and blue. We've always been yellow and blue. Um, but one interesting thing is we, we changed the color of our yellow to be more compatible um, for screen readers and for people that might have disabilities. So being more um, compliant, I guess you can say, uh, making it easier to read. And so little tweaks like that, but still keeping the essence of what we do. Yeah, that's, now let me ask you, is the, um, the need greater than the demand? I mean, um, can you keep up with it all or are you trying you know, to always grow and provide more? Yeah, I mean, the, the demand is huge. I mean, I think, you know, when we think about 20%, I think it's 27% of Americans have a disability. Um, you know, obviously not all could benefit from a service dog and, um, you know, but but for those that do, we really wanna help. And um, Canine Companions is a member of a coalition called Assistance Dogs International. Um, I'm actually on the board and um, that is a really a group of, of nonprofit service dog providers and uh, we set certain standards for ensuring that when our dogs are out in public, that they're behaving appropriately. Um, and we have other standards just for the organizations that are set. Um, so we have over, uh, there's over a hundred organizations like ours. And I think the numbers are probably, um, you know, there might be uh, just under 20,000 service dogs out there. Um, in, in, in our communities, you know, throughout the world. So knowing the numbers of Americans that could benefit from it, you know, there's always a great need for, for more service dogs. And, you know, one way that we can get there, of course, is donations. Um, that will only allow, um, you know, canine companions to continue to, to build, uh, but also volunteering. It, it's just super important for us. And, you know, I know I mentioned it previously, but we couldn't do it without those volunteer puppy raisers. They're really providing the basis of, um, of the dog's you know, growth as they're young. And they, they actually teach the dog almost 30 different tasks that they're gonna then eventually utilize. Um, and after the puppy raiser has the dog, they go on to one of our six training centers and they work with professional instructors and our professional instructors are training the more advanced types of tasks where you can take the basis of what was built with the puppy raiser and, and really expand on that. And our professional instructors, they, it takes them three to five years to, um, to fully learn their craft. They're not only training dogs, but they're helping people learn the tasks that the dogs learn. And um, a lot of them have a lot of background in, in social work and things like that. Sounds like you've got a lot of experts and sounds like there's a, a real need for that. Let me ask you something. Um, your program for people doesn't cost them anything, right? It does not. So if, um, if you're in need of a service dog, um, we do have an application process, um, but then you come to one of our training centers for a two-week class, and we have um, dorm rooms or guest rooms there for you and your family to stay over that two weeks. Uh, one thing that we learned is when um, somebody with a disability needs to come to class every day, and if they're staying at a hotel or other location, it takes a lot of energy and effort to, to pack everything up. You know, imagine if you have a child utilizing a wheelchair and you're, you're getting in the um, handicap accessible van and, you know, it takes a lot of effort. So we've created dorm rooms at um, all of our training centers for people to stay there. So for over two weeks, They'll, um, they'll train and they'll learn all the commands that the dogs know. Our instructors then go through a process of matching them, um, ultimately you know, graduating in a ceremony. And then once they go home, we provide continued follow-up services, workshops and opportunities to um, really ensure that the service dog is still um, doing the tasks that are needed. You know, oftentimes somebody might go to a new job or um, something might change in their life and they might need a new task for the dog to implement for them to make their life easier. So we provide all of that, um, the dog, you know, the team training classes and the follow-up free of charge, thanks to our really generous donors. Wow, that's an amazing service that you offer. And if, if people have not heard about you before, I wanna make sure they know how to go find more information. Canine.org is your website, correct? 
Absolutely. Yep. And you can find information there on donating, volunteering, um, and just, you know, another aspect, you can even um, help advocate for us. And, and we want to ensure that um, people with service dogs with disabilities have a 100% public access out there in our community. So there's another option there within our volunteering that I forgot to mention of, of being one of our advocates. Well, and advocacy is very important to um, get the, um, the, need, the help that people need and for people to understand what's needed. So Janine, thank you so very much. This has just been great to learn all about you and Canine Companions, and we're honored um, to support you in your efforts with some customized products to engage your, your audience. Oh, and, thank you, Kay. It's my, our pleasure. Yeah, just so fun. Is there anything else that we want to share that you'd like to share with our viewers before we wrap this up? Um, no, I mean, I, I, I appreciate you so much having us on. Um, getting the word out, increasing awareness of our of our service is so important. And um, if anybody would like to get involved, visit our website, like you said, canine.org. Thank Excellent. you so much. We Kay. encourage everyone to check it out um, and, and try and attend some events. There's so many ways you can get involved, whether it's just a donation, whether you want to volunteer or like with the advocacy. So uh, we need, we need the world to keep supporting you and the, and the great work that you do. And thank you, Janine, for thank all you. your time today. Thank you, Kay. Okay.